Andre Francis, and I teach chemistry and physics at the St. Croix Central High, High School. Um, what I do involve uh, getting my students to, first of all, love the subject. I know people may have the idea of um, cutting away emotion and logic, as they would say, but that is really uh, an old school idea from actually René Descartes, a philosopher who, who was also a mathematician, and he had a wrong anatomy of the brain. And somehow he came up with this idea of emotion and logic separated. But really and truly, it's been known that with the limbic system of the brain and how we think, emotion and logic are actually indissolubly welded together. You have to love what you do or have emotions into producing some of the most logically um, uh, fascinating or beautiful work. As a teacher, and with, with what it is I have experienced um, through tragedy and, and uh, different, um, uh, as it were, life experiences, I realized that teaching in that way also helps me as, as a teacher to improve. And uh, pretty much now I, I really need to improve um, because <laughs> in a way my life depended on it, or it depends on it. Hi there, can I have the cup? Take this off for a little bit. All right. Those dark glasses I have on are actually prescription. So they're not just for the sun. Or six or eight, a good one. All I want to do is boil them. They're, That's a big they, stack, you know. I yeah, I'm gonna break it. <laughs> okay, but they're still young, though. Yeah, I don't um, want them young. I want them so I can yeah, stick them and look. cook tomorrow and eat one a day. <laughs> so I don't have to. How much you want them? Uh, about no, that's okay. That's good. What's that? Eight, two, six, four, seven. Seven. That's good. And they're small, so yeah, that's cool. Thank you very much. How they look? My eyes aren't that great. How are they okay? Can I ask you a little favor? My eyes aren't that good. I need a little help. I'm going to get a plastic. Yes. I need like about uh, 12 of them. No, this is the cheapest one. Oh, you want this? The cheap one, the yeah. Three, four, one, three, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Oh, you know, okay, okay. Yeah. Bless you. Thank yeah. you very so, much. Yeah. Thanks for the yeah. help. Okay, you have um, And let's put the other half in here. Okay. Let's put the other four in here. Okay. <laughs> God bless you, honey. You're welcome. Thanks for the help. Yeah. I appreciate anytime, it. Anytime. Sometimes I think I need to wear a sign that says, I really can't see. Letters I can recognize, McDonald's, uh, things that I have known from before, big letters. Especially if they're black, I can see that. But unless the thing is like right up here, that's why you see me holding the bag in the supermarket to open it so I could find where it is because I can't do it just normal anymore. There's hardly any feel in the hands. So when I hold it there, I bring it close to help me find my way to open it. You see? So that's how I help myself with that. But if I was going to the supermarket, I normally would have, unless a friend is taking me, which they promise and sometimes they don't show up, 
but I call Vitran Plus. And Vitran Plus is for the handicapped people. And so they will drop you off at the supermarket. And when I get in there now, I notify them at the counter that I'm going to need some assistance. And could they please send somebody to help me while I'm in there? Then I have to call Vitran when I'm done to come and pick me up. So you really have to have time to lay around and just want to be there. But more importantly, when I'm standing in the exit to get out of the supermarket, thank God the supermarket has a chair for handicapped people. So I could sit in that while I wait. Because sometimes when I have to pay taxis to go over there, even for them to call a taxi for me, it takes a while. My name is Amelia Hedley Lamont. I'm uh, the executive director of the Disability Rights Center of the Virgin Islands. Uh, the Disability Rights Center is the what's referred to as the protection and advocacy organization for the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, our mission is simply this, is that's to advance the rights of people with disabilities who live in the territory. The Disability Rights Center began in the territory uh, in 1977. Uh, it's part of what's referred to as the protection and advocacy system. And the system came into being as a result of a scandal that had occurred at the Willowbrook um, Institution in Staten Island, New York. At that time, a young uh, investigative reporter, Geraldo Rivera, uh, went um, and discovered a facility that housed probably over 3,000 people with developmental disabilities, psychiatric disabilities, and they were treated in inhumane um, conditions. Um, then, I believe, Senator Robert Kennedy you know, brought it to the country's attention. Uh, Congress acted and determined that um, we need to create a system so that persons who are not in a position to advocate on their own, they have a system in place that can do just that. Um, we are a member of a national network, which is called the National Disability Rights Network, which is our, in essence, um, technical assistance support, lobbying arm, if you will, um, and they provide resources that we use. My name is Junior John Straker. I am the CEO of Lutheran Social Services. Lutheran Social Services began actually in 1904 with what we now know as Queen Louise Home for Children. And since then, we've added a number of services. We've expanded to include services for children with disabilities. We did neglect and abuse kids. Now we have a cottage for children with disabilities. We also have the only Early Head Start program in the Virgin Islands. We have group homes for adults with disabilities. So we have a facility here and one in St. Thomas. And um, we have senior, low-income senior housing here and in St. Thomas. Along with, we've done disaster um, relief, disaster um, mitigation. So we do a lot of disaster work in time of disaster. We also do a parenting class and support. It's actually support and education um, in hope that we could prevent kids from being abused and could strengthen the family. Oh, pirates, yes, they rub I. So I do the merchant ships. Minutes after day to guide to the bottomless pit. But my hands was made strong by the hands of the Almighty. Pushed forward in this generation. Triumphantly, won't you help to sing? Songs of freedom. It's all I ever so Andre, where are you going? I'm going to uh, 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 Miss Marsha Schumann. She is a music instructor and um, at the heart of my rehabilitation activity, uh, and therefore, I really want to do the best I can possibly do with her. I, I really do appreciate what she is um, attempting to do with me, seeing uh, what it is I experience, and I'm very hopeful and anticipating um, extraordinary results by being under her leadership and direction 
in this exercise. In my work, uh, I was a master millionaire producer for IDS American Express, which meant you had to write a certain number of million, your persistency had to be at a certain amount, and the last conference I was in was Hawaii, taken there by my company, and uh, so those were sort of achievements. And to do that in Chicago, a little West Indian girl in the midst of the big boys, I was good to go. The joke is when you just look at me, there's nothing there that says I'm disabled. So that's number one. Now I understand I still have some looks at the ripe age of 60. So when I'm sitting in Sunny Isle hanging out, the boys do find their way to my table to come and speak. Then they realize, and I tell them about my cane, or I have the cane right there on the table. So you could see some starting to back off right there. That's how that goes. Some people think because I'm disabled, my brain should be on vacation too. And they just find out real quick, uh oh, that one is troublesome, my son. Woo! What a piece of fire. Yes. Sorry, that's how I come. The oldest friends are not necessarily the ones who can deal with you when you get sick. Everybody is busy working. Everybody bless you. Everybody has a husband and child and job. So they don't have my time because normally when I was well, I'd be busy working too. So you just learn to respect that. When they have my time is good. When they don't have my time, I accept it just so. But because I am the kind of person that I am, I'm sort of industrious and talk to strangers. You see that in Sunny Isle? There's nobody that comes through there that if I take a chance and ask them a favor, drop me there. I need to run to the supermarket and get that. I get help like that from strangers because I take a chance. And the condition that I am, I just can't sit down and wait because you see, their life goes on and nobody's waiting for me. So if I want it bad enough, I do something about it. I ask till I get something to go. Bitrain Plus is for patients on dialysis. I too am hearing impaired. And when I go for a doctor's appointment, I try to get there on time. I call Bitrain and with some luck, I'll arrive at the doctor's office. And then what happened is I had to wait and wait and wait and wait to be seen by the doctor. By this time, no one was aware that Vitran stops running at 5 p.m. So they called them and no one answered when they called the office because they were closed. So anytime after that, I'm stranded. What am I going to do? Vitran tells us that dialysis patients are the priority. The rest of us are to catch whatever is left. And so often, we're left and we're stuck without a ride. Why do you think public transportation is important for people with disabilities? They cannot leave their homes without transportation. Okay, there are many of them, the cars are parked up there forever. They cannot do this. Some of them live alone. They do not have family members. They may have children, but they are working. So that's the reason why we have public transportation for persons with disabilities. Okay, very important part of the daily lives. If they are going to attain the education that they need, the employment that they are seeking, whatsoever, they need public transportation. That is what takes them to their destination during the day. But you can imagine a person with disability who come to work today at 9, the other day at 11, the other day at 12.30, I don't come at all, every other week. They're going to lose their job. So that's supposed to be a very reliable service in the life of a person with disability. Vitran has been taxed to the extreme. Uh, I participated, the benefit of participating in a summit where a, a variety of individuals from different agencies and, and perspectives came and said, okay, if you needed to do this, what would you do? How would you get there? Most of us chose Vitran. And what that, what that said to me was that Vitran is the only game in town. And that means Vitran is just being taxed and taxed and taxed and taxed. We need to look at other options in addition to, to Vitran because they do provide a very important service.
Thomas Torres is one of the residents at our Ginger Thomas resident. Thomas came to us maybe 15 years ago from Herbert Gregg. He had resided in Herbert Gregg for a number of years. From what we were told, his earlier history was lost. So we don't know his, anything about his parents, any kind of previous history to him. I can tell you when he came to us, he was shy, um, spoke very little, was determined to go back to Herbert Gregg. Um, since then, he's very verbal. Um, he is what we call the tour guide for um, Ginger Thomas, where whenever visitors come in, he you know assists them um, in any way that he can. Um, he's also very involved with volunteering. He's volunteered at the animal shelter. He also has a part-time job with us where he wash dishes. What do you like to do that fun? Watch your animal life. Why do you like animals? Because they're nice, friendly. Where would you like to work? Here. Huh? Here. Here? Where is here? With the animal life. Actually, have some clients that they will, they have professed that the only way that they were able to recover from a traumatic situation, be it actually physical and or psychological, uh, they provided a means which these people could come out of a shell and able to transmit to the animal, uh, whereas they would not have been able to transmit with another person. Queen Louise Home has always had animals around because that helps a lot of those children cope with things that they uh, have not been able to do. I think that it's the education of the general public knowing what the rights of the disabled person is to have a service animal that can assist them in, in their living. The opportunities within veterinary medicine uh, vary tremendously. There are uh, opportunities uh, of employment within the clinic that are not amenable to some people that have physical disabilities simply because of being able to have to work with the animals. Uh, however, there are other situations within a veterinary clinic. For instance, the receptionist. The receptionist doesn't have to walk. The receptionist just has to be able to talk and work on a computer. Um, they can sit behind the desk in a wheelchair. It doesn't make any difference. In fact, if um, they, somebody came to me and was seeking the possibility of employment, I would probably be right on top of it simply because my experience so far in uh, that I have a person that has a functional cognitive disability and has been an employee of mine for, uh, oh gosh, we're looking at now probably 30 years. This young man uh, came to me when he was 18 years old and he's a very, very valuable employee. He's very valuable and uh, most people wouldn't know that he has a disability. One, two, Ready, go. White sheep, white sheep, on a blue... This, this definitely is highly recommended. Rehabilitation, traumatic brain injury music is recommended. I'm using this really as a catalyst to see how I can get my mind back again. In June 2006, I got accepted to um, St. Louis, Missouri, um, the university at Washington University, St. Louis, Missouri, uh, in the medical school. Um, I remember, you know, Andre, come on, man, you gotta go, you gotta go. I said, wow, I gotta go. So I went into the car. He um, took his his baby, and his girlfriend was there. His girlfriend was driving. I was still tired, still sleepy, so I just put myself in the back and just, you know, shut my eyes. I remember they stopped, they let the baby out. I just had to move over a little bit. The baby was out, and um, I remember opening my eyes for the first time at a point when I actually everything became online, as they would as they would say, and that's when I realized I was um, I was in a horrible accident. My Indian friends who had worked with me nine years before, who had invited me down to come and work, they said, Octavia, and they're all around my age, 
He said, Octavia, something is wrong. This is not the old Octavia. I have to tell you, I used to be about 235 pounds. This illness took me down to 100 pounds, size two and frail. People who knew me from before said, uh-uh, something is wrong here. I had been on yo-yo dieting all my life, so when the weight came off, I was kind of, eh, you know. But that was a little too much and sickly. So the doctors started, we went to run tests, sent me to the laboratory, that's how we knew. The sugar was 400, and they wanted to know how come I was still functioning, not in a stroke or whatever, and my joke was God wasn't ready for me yet. The way we work with disabled guests is uh, whatever they need, they just need to let us know. And you know, there's, there's a multitude of disabilities, and we are happy to uh, do whatever we need to within our ability. Even, you know, provide uh, working with other business on the island, such as Continuum Care, to provide potentially CNAs for people if they'd like to come for a week or two or three. And because the property is a very efficient property, you don't have to walk really far to get to the beach, to get to the, your car. Not even have to go over one step to get into your room and into your bathroom. We are providing more and more bars and benches and chairs to be accessible in showers. Um, we do not use bathtubs except for one room. We use mostly um, shower stalls, which are a lot easier to get in and out of. Uh, and we also have provided some rooms for the deaf ministries in Puerto Rico. What types of jobs could you do here? could definitely do a desk job. Reservations would be great. What's important more and more nowadays is, is uh, social media, which a lot of our businesses uh, around are complaining because you know, you got to put hours and hours into social media to get, um, make sure the wrong thing isn't being said, or just to get your name out there with everyone else who's competing to get their name out there. We have about 48,000 registered voters in the territory. Uh, St. Croix, I think we have approximately 23,000. St. Thomas, there's about 22,000, and about a little uh, around 1,800 on St. John. What we do is that we ensure that all our polling sites have accommodations for anyone that's disabled. Uh, the voting machine can be lowered for someone in a wheelchair to access right up front on the machine. We have headsets that um, are attached to, the, to certain machines at the polling sites that hearing impaired or visually impaired, there's you know the device for them to use to actually cast their votes independently. We provide um, our judges and there's facilitators at each site that if a person uh, comes to vote, they're not sure of how to operate, use a machine. Um, they have other um, distractions or they just don't have the ability to do that. That person can have someone sign an affidavit to help them, to assist them, whether it's on the machine or filling out a paper ballot. Do you vote? Mm, yeah. You do vote? I, I vote in this November coming. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to ask who you vote in for because that's a private thing, but yeah. why, do you, why do you vote? Because I want to vote. And what makes you excited about elections? Just come on and vote. I went to the VI um, thing here in Sunny Isle. Voters registration because I was living in St. Thomas and I got my card and I took care of that in St. Thomas. Now I'm in St. Croix, I wanted them to know I'm here because I take those things very important. So I went there. My question was, do you have any transport to help those handicapped people get here? She said to me, ma'am, we don't handle that. That would be something to start if anybody was concerned, we need the help to get there. You're on your own. Why do you think it's important for you to work? To get checked, to get a paycheck. Why do you need a paycheck for it? So that I can go to the bank and cash it. If a disabled person 
comes in and fills in an application looking for work, don't just write them off. Please give them an opportunity. Please give them an opportunity. Because whatever weakness they have one way, I trust me, they have some skills in some way that could be quite beneficial. So give them an opportunity, please. I used to live in Florida and I used to give do smoothies, a little fruit smoothies and stuff. And the kids in the neighborhood used to love it. And they used to Miss Hazel, you need to open up a little smoothie stand and stuff like that. And I say, you know what? I'm gonna come back home and do that. And right now I wish I could get some help. I go to the schools and you know, put out brochures and stuff, hoping they will send kids, you know, kids will volunteer here, do community service, you know. So we, we have somebody here and could I have a job please? Sure! Welcome on board. Okay, okay. Nice. <laughs> My wish would be that all disabilities can be reversed. Either through technological advancements, through um, uh, rehabilitation, through music, uh, through many other devices that we have maybe not yet discovered. I would like to celebrate that and, and encourage people that this injury is a transformation type injury for some people. It can transform them, but just like a seed that has to rot and then grows into a tree, sometimes this is what this injury uh, can do to you. You go down only to be resurrected, as it were, figuratively, or revived into a new person. And I would like to be the poster boy for that particular. Um, experience. I think a little bit better respect from the public. I would say that what I think would be better for disabled people like me, that would make it better for us as we try to go around doing things, is that people would at least have a little more sensitivity awareness to disabled people.